A lot of you may have wondered what goes into you're watching something, you're watching on Netflix or Hulu, and you're watching something like, let's say, how it's made. And you wonder, hey, I know that voice. I like that voice. I wonder what goes into recording something like that. What could it possibly be? Well, here at The Lefty Show and twitch.tv slash The Lefty Show, I'm going to show you. This is a script. This is going to be a live session reading a script for a television show called Made in Virginia. It airs on PBS. If you're on the East Coast, check your local listings on PBS. Otherwise, you can go to madeinva.tv. Madeinva.tv. The show is called Made in Virginia. Again, airs on PBS. This is a live recording session for something that will be on air in a few short weeks. After I record it here, it's going to go off to the producer who's going to make sure that everything works. There may be a couple rounds of revisions. Hey, this line was a little choppy or uh, this didn't make a whole lot of sense or you just mispronounced that. And a couple rounds of revisions. After that, it's off to the mastering and then off to your television. So this is how it's done. Or, well, this is how I do it. <clears throat> this is Made in Virginia. Next time on Made in Virginia, we'll be headed to the New River Valley to the largest private employer of Southwest Virginia, Volvo Trucking. The Volvo Trucking Plant in Dublin, Virginia, produces all their North American trucks. The first truck to come off the assembly line in September of 1982. The first truck came off the assembly line in September of 1982. Each truck Volvo produces is completely custom fit to each customer's needs. Each truck Volvo produces is completely custom to fit each customer's needs. All right, I flubbed a couple there. We're going to re-roll them back just to give it, get it all together in one solid, solid paragraph. The Volvo Trucking Plant in Dublin, Virginia produces all of their North American trucks. The first truck came off the assembly line in September of 1982. Each truck Volvo produces is completely custom to fit each customer's needs. Every Volvo truck begins the same way, with the highest quality parts brought into their warehouse from suppliers across Virginia, the U.S., and, in some cases, from countries around the world. But the unique personality of each truck begins to take shape as parts are sequenced into a material flow to build a truck for a specific customer. All Volvo cabs are assembled using high-strength steel, which gives the trucks incredible strength and durability. Here in the Body in White shop, 83 robots help weld floor pans, sides, doors, and roofs to create the familiar shape of the Volvo truck. Before they're finished, thousands of weld bring this cab together. After careful inspection, cabs move on to the paint shop where they are treated but <clears throat> After careful inspection, cabs move on to the paint shop where they are treated to a four-step process. First, they are dipped in an e-coat bath and given a highly durable epoxy base that will fight rust for the life of the truck. Next, they receive a base primer coat. The final two steps involve an advanced wet-on-wet -wet paint technology that applies base color and clear coat for an incredibly resilient, vibrant finish. The cab then goes through a bake oven to harden the paint after which it gets a final quality inspection. At this point, cabs enter Volvo's automatic storage and retrieval system, where they wait to be brought into the final assembly building. Now, the real work begins. And I'll give a few alternate takes of, of lines like these, just to give some options. You want some options in the cutting room, and sometimes you don't want to go back to the talent because there's booking fees or whatever. And so giving some alternate takes definitely helps. So now we'll try some inflections on just this one short line to kick off this paragraph. Now the real work begins. Now the real work begins. Now the real work begins. Thousands of skilled employees work in a careful sequence to trim out each cab with their interior components.
Sleepers move down a dedicated line because they require more time to build out than their day cab counterparts. It's kind of flubbed in the middle there, so we'll give it one more go. Sleepers move down a dedicated line because they require more time to build out than their day cab counterparts. One more time. Sleepers move down a dedicated line because they require more time to build out than their day cab counterparts. But soon, all cabs are blended into the cab line where the interiors are completed, the electronic dash is installed with all its electrical harnesses, and the seat and other trim pieces are installed. The windshield is now mounted using a unique rubber seal instead of glue, making it easier to replace on the road. The windshield is now mounted using a new <coughs> The windshield is now mounted using a <coughs> The windshield is now mounted using a unique rubber seal instead of glue, making it easier to replace on the road. Then the final cab interior items, including the steering wheel and driver's side airbag, are installed, after which a final electrical test is conducted. Then the final cab interior items, including the steering wheel <coughs> Then the final cab interior items, including the steering wheel and driver side airbag, are installed, after which a final electrical test is conducted. And because I flubbed that line so much, we're going to go through it one or two more times just to make sure. <clears throat> or, excuse me, this entire paragraph. The windshield is now mounted using a unique... <clears throat> the windshield is now mounted using a unique rubber seal instead of glue, making it easier to replace on the road. Then the final cab interior items, including the steering wheel and driver's side airbag, are installed, after which a final electrical test is conducted. While the cab is being built up, the chassis is going through its own unique assembly, making sure that it receives the right components to match the job it will be performing. Cross members are placed in squaring fixtures to make sure everything stays aligned. Brackets are installed to hold fuel and air tanks, electrical harnesses, and more. Went through that middle section just one more time because I uh, kind of messed up the flow. <clears throat> Cross members are placed into squaring fixtures to make sure everything stays aligned. Brackets are installed to hold fuel and air tanks, electrical harnesses, and more. Then, all the electrical and air lines are plumbed. Next, the assembly team decks the axles and flip the chassis. From there, the fifth wheel is installed and the entire chassis goes through a paint booth to receive its final color. And now the chassis is ready to receive its engine and transmission, decked as a single assembly. After that come the tires, radiator, and exhaust system. Now here's an interesting bit because there's a list there, tires, radiator, and exhaust system. Now it could be that they want to formulate everything in a series of cuts. Bam, 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 bam. It also could be that they want to shrill, elongate that shot and uh, move from slowly from one to the other. Not cut, but you want to fade in, fade out. So I gave one take there where I said, after that come the tires, radiator, and exhaust system. That's for the longer shot or the longer sequence of editing if that's they want, what they want to do. Now... Let's assume it's all jump cuts. <clears throat> After that come the tires, radiator, and exhaust system. It sounds more compressed that way, more natural. <clears throat> At this point, the chassis is rolling on its own wheels, and it is ready to meet up with its cab. The cab is brought in using an overhead rail system, where it is carefully decked onto the chassis. Although now it looks like a complete Volvo truck, work is still not finished. All fluids are added and the engine and cooling system are pressure tested for any possible leaks. Inspections continue as the truck receives its hood, grille, and the famous slash and Volvo iron mark, which proudly represent the heritage, quality, and safety of the Volvo brand. Now the truck is ready to be started for the very first time and then it receives a dyno test to check the engine power. 
I feel like there I could use a little more inflection, so I'm going to run that one back. <clears throat> now the truck is ready to be started for the very first time, and it then receives a dyno test to check the engine power. Every few minutes, you'll see a new truck roll off the assembly line here in southwest Virginia, but the truck is still not ready to leave the plant. First, it receives a thorough pre-delivery inspection, including a test of the anti-lock braking system, check of all the lights, safety systems, electrical components, and more. Even the fifth wheel is checked to make sure it engages and locks properly. Finally, the truck heads over to Volvo's customer care center for a final check of all fluids, a wheel alignment, and then the truck is driven to make sure that everything is operating properly. Okay, so that list gets a little weird. It's not just a list. It's, it's like three different sentences all put together. <clears throat> so you have to find a way. You're not, you're not progressing through them as though it's a list. You just want to hit each one and make it its own thing. So we'll <clears throat> Finally, the truck heads over to Volvo's customer care center for a final check of all fluids a wheel alignment, and then the truck is driven to make sure that everything is operating properly. And I'm going to try something here just as a, just as a, 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 a free, uh, what do they call it? I don't know. A one-liner. I'm going to try to add an and between these two, these first two clauses here. We'll see if that flows a little bit better. <clears throat> Finally, the truck heads over to Volvo's customer care center for a final check of all fluids and a wheel alignment. And then the truck is driven to make sure that everything is operating properly. Once a truck passes all final inspections, it is ready and Volvo employees are proud to ship this quality truck to a customer where it will have years of service and, in many cases, log more than a million miles on the road. All right, there were a lot of uh, clauses there, a lot of commas. We'll try to piece through this. <clears throat> Once a truck passes all final inspections, it is ready, and Volvo and... <clears throat> Once a truck passes all final inspections, it is ready, and Volvo employees are proud to ship this quality truck to a customer. Oh, no, okay. So the truck to a customer, and then we can pause there for a breath if need. Quality truck to a customer doesn't sound natural. One more time. <clears throat> Once a truck passes all final inspections, it is ready, and Volvo employees are proud to ship this quality truck to a customer where it will have years of service and, in many cases, log more than a million miles on the road. The New River Valley is centrally located in the Mid-Atlantic region for the... <clears throat> The New River Valley is centrally located in the Mid-Atlantic region of the United States. It has great infrastructure, a skilled workforce, and is close to major shipping routes for raw materials and finished trucks. Volvo continues to innovate the future of their trucks with the latest technology and safety. So next time you're driving down the road anywhere in North America and you see a Volvo truck, you'll know that it was made in Virginia. And then we'll try a couple billboards on, the, on that last <clears throat> paragraph. Volvo continues to innovate the future of their trucks with the latest technology and safety. So next time you're driving down the road anywhere in North America and you see a Volvo truck, you'll know it was made in Virginia. So next time you're driving down the road anywhere in North America and you see a Volvo truck, you'll know that it was made in Virginia. So next time you're driving down the road anywhere in North America and see a Volvo truck, you'll know that it was made in Virginia. <clears throat> All right. So <clears throat> that is a good take. I My recording style is such that <clears throat> I don't... I I try to avoid multiple different takes, whole takes, because because 
When you do that, you run the risk of getting different voices. When you do multiple read-throughs, and especially because this is this is something I've been doing for, you know, this is season two. We did 13 episodes season one. I've got this voice down. Like, I, you know, I know what I'm trying to hit. I know what I'm trying, where I'm trying to inflect and how I'm trying to inflect. And coupling that with trying to do multiple takes, you'll run the risk of getting different voice, different sounding voices. So this way, when I just try to see things and if I just try to come at things as, as I encounter them in different ways, excuse me, I can minimize the chances that I'll end up with takes that sound like they're coming from a slightly different voice. This way, the voice stays the same pretty much all throughout. And we should be good. Uh, let's go through and listen to it. And we'll try to chop out the exposition. <clears throat> Next time on Made in Virginia, we'll be headed to the New River Valley to the largest private employer of Southwest Virginia, Volvo Trucking. The Volvo that, Trucking that clip is private employer of Southwest Virginia, Volvo Trucking. No, okay. The Volvo Trucking plant in Dublin, Virginia produces all their North American trucks. <clears throat> You'll notice here, by the way, that what you hear now is going to sound a little bit different than what you heard coming from my microphone. That's because I have some post-processing that I do in Adobe Audition to, well, just to punch it up, just to make it sound more loud, to pick up more. So that's why it sounds a little bit different. Before they're finished, thousands of weld bring this cab together. Oh, wait, what? <clears throat> Hold on a second. What did I say? Before they're finished, thousands of weld bring... Th what? Before they're finished, thousands of weld bring... Thousands of weld? That's not a word. Where is this in the script? Did I say that right? Ba -ba 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 Before they're finished, thousands of welds. All right. <clears throat> See, this is why you do this, uh, so that you can get proper takes. Here we go. Before they're finished, thousands of welds bring this cab together. Before they're finished, thousands of welds bring this cab together. Before they're finished, thousands of welds bring this cab together. Before they're finished, thousands of welds bring this cab together. You'll know that it was made in Virginia. Volvo right. can And those are just the safety lines. Bam! We got it! We got it! It's cool to see how you read the scripts and check your work. Yeah, uh, well, sometimes I don't. I just trust that I got it, but the camera's on this time, so. Yeah, camera, that's, that's what's cool about the Made in Virginia show is that it's and that's what's cool about all shows like this but made in virginia specifically is that it's beautifully shot it's incredibly high quality you get a great voice telling you about all the great stuff but also you're learning you're learning about something that you never really thought about like in the first episode of season 1 of made in virginia it was about uh, it was a company called tanum and they make uh, they make three wheeled uh, trikes, uh, reverse three wheeled reverse trikes. So the power wheel, the single wheel, is the power wheel, and it's in back of the front two steering wheels. That's right. Remembering the script now, three wheeled reverse trikes. Yep. <clears throat> anyway, well, what I didn't know is that they harvest the motor that powers the Tandem Invader from Suzuki Hayab. I think it's a uh, Hayabusa. The Suzuki Hayabusa motor from Suzuki Motorcycles. So they just go out and buy a gross of Suzuki Motorcycles and then come in and harvest their parts to make this. And I thought, oh, that's really cool. That's I never would have thought of that, going to buy something else and to 
to cannibalize it to make it something different and to make it something really cool. So you get something like that in, in all these episodes. You know, you learn how whiskey is made. You learn how guitars are made, right? How cool is that? How is a guitar made? And you learn about all the processes and you get interviews from people who tell you more intricate things than what I tell you in the voiceover uh, because my voiceover is usually pretty bare bones. But then they'll intersplice interviews with the people that actually know what they're talking about and they'll tell you more about this or that or the other thing. So, Made in Virginia, it's a cool melding because different shows, other shows of this format... They just have the voiceover just showing you the steps. It's just, here's this step, here's this step, here's this step, and very rarely will you get an explanation of why. Why is this done? Why this over that? Why are you doing this as opposed to that? Made in Virginia, I'll tell you this is done. This next step is done. And then there will be somebody else telling you why they do that. That's what I really like about the show.